Hello everyone, today we're talking about a third variation. This is the third of three variations of sagging that you'll see in your push-ups. This one is more of an upper back sagging. You'll see the shoulder blades come away from the upper back. You might see scapular winging. Um, so what's going on here? So the support muscles, the serratus anterior here, they're what, <laughs> you know, let's, this is a, I have to say this. You'll learn about the serratus anterior as it functions at the shoulder, as it moves the arm, in the school at least, if you've taken any anatomy. They call it your boxer's muscle, right? It helps you push away at the very end of a punch. Now that's true, for sure, but I would argue that its primary function is not to bring the arm forward, but to bring the upper body back brings the rib cage back. You should look up my article on the serratus anterior because I wrote a lot about this. It's a passionate subject of mine. I don't have many passions, but serratus anterior is one of them. I'm kidding, I have a lot of passions. But does that mean that I have, Never mind. Um, so with the upper back sagging, the spine reverses, the upper back flattens, and it starts to fall towards the ground. It's normal for it to be a little curved up towards the ceiling. It's normal for it to be like this, but what starts to happen is it does this. Okay, and you'll see it straightens out. Some people like that feeling because it takes some tension off of them. It allows them, it allows them to breathe. Uh, <laughs> And that's a whole nother issue that we can't really get into right now. For the purpose of the push-up, though, it doesn't make a lot of sense. My rib cage is supposed to be rounded so that my round, slightly round shoulder blade can sit on top of it really well and it can move really well. If the rib cage flattens, it runs into it. It can't move around. So it has to come away from the rib cage. It has to destabilize. And that destabilizes your shoulder and puts it at, you know, a lack of stability position. Uh, so what does it look like? It took a while to get to this, but we talked about it a little bit on the knees, right? So it looks like this. People are here. Generally, they're kind of like setting their shoulder blades back and down like a bench press. And then they go like this. Okay, I don't really ever allow any clients to do it that way because I don't think it's very healthy. I think the more optimal way to go about this is every rep, you need to finish long with a round upper back to restore the position of the scapula on the rib cage, of the shoulder blade on the rib cage. So as I come down, I gotta make sure that I'm actively pushing away to keep those support muscles, that serratus anterior, on the whole time. And then as I come back up, I've gotta make sure I finish, okay? I made a whole video about finishing at the top. It's very related to this, but if you're just trying to fix this flat upper back, this scapular winging stuff, this is a good way to go about it. So recap, upper back falls down towards the ground. We want to make sure it stays around and comes up towards the ceiling. Make sure you're cueing this sternum up towards the ceiling. I didn't mention that earlier. That's a good cue for you though. Bring the sternum, the chest bone here, up towards the ceiling and that will help you get that reach of your upper body that'll help you bring your upper body away from your arms rather than just trying to reach your arms forward even more because that's the function of the serratus right it brings the rib cage posteriorly thank you for sticking with my little asides uh, hopefully that's helpful if it's not or you need more help leave a comment below